everyone, Danielle here with my very first video for a blog named Hero. I'm super excited to get to share some stuff with you guys um, a couple times throughout the month. And my first video is going to be about um, washi tape. Now if you have never used washi tape before, you definitely, um, definitely need to pick up a roll. It's a really easy way to add pattern and texture and color to your card. Um, without doing a whole lot of work. Sometimes I can get a little bit lazy and so that's when washi tape becomes my best friend. But uh, the downside to washi tape is that there are so many cute um, colors and patterns out there and I unfortunately do not have an endless budget to spend on my crafting supplies so I had to get a little innovative when it came to washi tape. So I tried to come up with a way that I could kind of get the look of washi tape um, without actually having to buy it by just using supplies that I already had on hand. And so I know that there's a way that you can do it with tissue paper I believe, but that just seemed like a lot of work to me. So I'm just going to use regular old cardstock and stamps and ink that I already have on hand and um, I'll get to work and hopefully you guys will be able to learn a thing or two. Um, the nice thing about washi tape though is that it is uh, really thin. Um, so it doesn't add a lot of bulk to your card and it is low tack so you can stick it down on your paper and then peel it right off and you don't have to worry about it ripping, tearing your paper and it's still it's still tacky after that so you can you know keep using it. So that is the nice thing about washi tape. But if you don't have any or if you were looking for a particular color or maybe a pattern um, and you couldn't find any to buy you can always make your own. But anyway so I'm going to show you how I do it and it's super simple. And all I'm going to do, I love this wood grain tape, so I wanted to kind of see if I could recreate it um, using regular cardstock. I'm going to use 80-pound uh, cardstock, so it's going to be kind of thick. I don't actually, if I had a thinner card, th like a thinner weight cardstock, that's what I would use. But this is the the um, the lightest cardstock I have, so it's going to have to have to do. So. Um, I'm just going to start with my plain white cardstock. This is actually just uh, a scrap that I had left from something else. And I'm going to be using um, Gathered Twigs Distress Ink. And this is one of the seasonal distress inks um, by Ranger. And this came out in the fall. And if you didn't know, they just came out with the spring um, collection of distress inks. And they're really, really, really pretty. And I'm hoping that I can get them. I'm kind of on a little bit of a spending freeze right now. So... I'm gonna have to gonna have to wait, but they're really beautiful, and if you like distress inks, you should definitely pick them up. But this is one from the fall, and it's one of my favorite browns ever. This and Vintage Photo are kind of my favorites right now, and I also like Cup of Joe by Hero Arts. They're uh, one of their mid-tone shadows. But um, so this is what I'm gonna use, and I'm going to use my absolute favorite um, background stamp, and that's the wood green. Um, from Hero Arts and so super simple I am just going to take my ink pad and ink up my stamp and um, just a little tip what I do this is actually dirty because I practiced this before I filmed the video just to make sure I could do it um, but when you're using if you're inking up a big stamp like this um, you might have a tendency to want to go like this like you would if you were stamping a sentiment or a smaller image but what's going to happen is you're actually going to get um, kind of these squares of ink. Even if you keep going over and over and over, you're still, I don't know if you're able to see it, but you still kind of get the impression of the actual ink pad. And when you go to stamp on your paper, that's going to show up. And I mean, if that's the look you're going for, then great. But if you were looking for a nice smooth um, background stamp, then the way I do it is I actually take my ink pad and I smear it, just kind of rub it across my stamp. And I just make sure, you know, that I get good coverage all around. And that way I know that I'm not going to get um, blocks of ink or any, any lines from the edges of the ink pad. And then when I do a big background stamp like this, especially the woodblock ones, I tend to bring my paper to the stamp instead of bringing my stamp to the paper. I just find it easier that way. I can get it um, lined up a little more straight. Although I have a terrible time eyeballing anything, so it usually ends up crooked anyway, so... Um, if I use a cling, I actually will use a stamp press most times because I just find that a little bit easier because um, because they are thinner and they don't have such a firm surface underneath like the wood block ones do. So I'm just going to go ahead and ink this up. 
and I tend to always get ink on my fingers and smear it all over the place so um, you could use your fingers and rub it all around like this for whatever reason I don't know if I don't hold the paper tight enough or whatever but um, sometimes my paper will slide and it looks like I got a double stamp or it's kind of blurry um, instead of being a nice crisp stamp so I use a brayer and it just makes it a lot easier um, and I know that I get all the way up to the edges and I don't mind no one's gonna see the back of this panel so I really don't care that I'm picking up the um, the ink and smearing it obviously if if I cared then I wouldn't be so haphazard with my rolling so that's that just make sure you get um, you know apply even pressure over the whole thing just to make sure you get good coverage and then I'm going to pull it up and there we have our wood grain stamp and it's nice and smooth you can't tell you know that I blotted down the ink um, you know you don't get any of the marks from the ink pad like if I just um, dotted it on there since I rubbed it on it came out real nice and smooth which is great and I'm just babbling so I will move on um, now I was originally going to stamp this onto craft card stock but then I was worried that it might get a little too dark so I opted to stamp on the white and obviously I'm not going to leave it like this you could you could leave it just like this but I actually wanted to go for more of a wood look so I'm going to take my ink blending tool and the same gathered twigs distress ink and I'm just going to ink blend the whole thing um, just pretty lightly because I do definitely still want to be able to see the wood grain I'm not too worried about it being um, like perfectly perfectly even coverage I just kind of wanted to tone down the white and then I'm going to go ahead and actually wipe down my craft mat because if I don't do it now I'll forget and then I'll probably put something white on there and it'll pick up all of the ink and then I'll be mad so, so I'm just going to clean that up real quick All right, let me get some of this stuff out of the way. So here's our panel that we made. Just stamped a background. And the next thing you need to do is figure out how big uh, of strips you want to make for your faux washi tape. So I like the size of this one. And I'll be real scientific and get out my ruler. And this is about a half of an inch wide. So I'm going to do the same thing because I do like... Um, I do like how wide this is. You can do it larger or smaller. You can even kind of vary the sizes so you get a little bit of um, variety. And I'm gonna pull up my paper trimmer. All right, so and what I'm gonna do now is then you just kind of decide which way you wanna cut it. Do you want the grain to go this way or this way? It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to just slice it this way and I'm going to do half an inch and I'm just going to keep doing a couple, I'll do a couple strips because I don't really know, uh, I don't really know how many I'm going to use for my card. So I'll just cut a bunch and I'm sure that's more than enough. And the nice thing about doing this too is that now I have created this uh, little panel here that I can use for a card. I could die cut a shape out of it, I could use it as the bottom of a card, I could do um, anything with this really. So I'm just going to throw this in my basket of scraps. And now I have my little strips of um, kind of, you know, fake washi tape. And I'm going to get my card out. But I'm just going to go ahead and kind of figure out how I want to lay these out. And I'm not really worried about the wood grain matching up at all because if I were using washi tape it never it never would. And I'm just going to kind of play around with this a little bit and see. Decisions, decisions. Um, I actually made this butterfly while I'm here. Uh, I paper pieced this butterfly. This is a hero, another Hero Arts stamp. Um, artist butterfly. If you know me, you know that I love butterflies, so no surprise that I use this. But I paper pieced this butterfly, and I actually made a video about how I paper pieced and colored the white in. So at some point I'll post that. But um, I'm going to be putting this on here, and I just 
I think two looks nice. I could leave them just, just like this um, with the straight edges. Or if I wanted to go for a more realistic tape look, um, I can just kind of tear the edges a little bit so that I get some of the, the paper kind of, the layers of the paper kind of fray. And obviously it wouldn't be this white if I were using tape, so I'm just going to go back with my ink blending tool and just kind of dull it down a little bit. And I'll do the same on this one, just to make it look a little more realistic. And like I said, this does take obviously much more time than just ripping off a piece of uh, ripping off a piece of tape. But if you don't want to spend the money, or if you're looking to really match um, colors or a pattern, this is a great way to really customize um, customize your card. All right, so I think that's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick the tape down, um, and by tape I mean my fake tape. Um, these little strips, and I'm going to be using my um, ATG gun. Oh, uh, this is kind of like, I'm a, I don't know, my two-year-old grabbed this and pulled the tape out, so it's kind of weird. Sometimes it won't work for me. I've just about run out of tape on this roll, so you can clearly tell that I prepared for this video. So there we go. Um, and I don't know about everybody else, but I can never remember how to put my refills in. I actually, every time I refill my ATG gun, I have to go on YouTube and watch a video about how to do it because that's how terrible I am at remembering um, how to refill it. And then... I could use my ruler for this to make sure that I line the t um, these little strips up straight. But why in the world would I ever, ever do that when I can just eyeball it and then get mad at myself for not having it be straight? So let me just... Oh, it's pretty good. Of course this one isn't perfect. There we go. So like I said, you can, like, I kind of um, line these up edge to edge, but you could always um, overlap them, leave a little bit of white space in between them. You can lay it out just like you would um, if you were using regular washi tape. And then the, ed the um, ends over here, I'm just going to take my little scissors and trim them off. And there we have it. And I'm not even going to finish the card. Uh, for you. I really just wanted to show you how to make this faux washi tape. And the reason I'm not going to finish it is because I actually don't even know what sentiment I'm going to put on here yet. Um, you'll, so you'll have to forgive me. I have two small children, uh, two and a half and six and a half months, and they did not cooperate with me today. So um, I'm going to go ahead and finish this card up and then I'll share a picture with you. But for now, this is what I have. Um, and I didn't even plan it, but my nail polish coordinates quite nicely with the layout of this card. So that is that. Uh, hopefully you learned a little something about making your own faux washi tape. And like I said, it's really great because um, you can customize it to match anything. If you have a favorite stamp set, you can use it to um, create a pattern on here. You can use any colors. You could do embossing. You could use your Copics. You could watercolor. There's like endless opportunities for making your own faux washi tape using just um, cardstock that you have on hand and your stamps and ink. So that's it from me and I hope you learned a little something. Thanks for visiting a blog named Hero and I will talk to you soon. Bye. For more information and to see the current challenge, visit a blog named hero.blogspot.com. Mm -hmm.